What's up, friends? I remember when I was a kid, probably about your age, I remember sitting in church. Now, when I was growing up, things were a little different compared to what you probably experienced, especially when we were actually able to gather together in the actual church building. But I remember a few Sundays sitting in the back of the church because that's where a lot of the kids used to sit once we got a little older. I remember listening to my grandfather, who was a pastor, uh, listening to him preach sermons. And if I'm being honest, never really understood what he was talking about. A lot of the times I wasn't even listening. Lord have mercy. I probably didn't always understand what my grandfather was saying. I probably wasn't always listening. But that was one thing that myself and the other kids would always notice. We would always notice when somebody got happy in church. I'm gonna let that sink in a little bit because you're probably wondering, well, Mr. Washington, shouldn't we always be happy? Listen, <laughs> when I say that we would notice when people would get happy in church, I I'm talking about something a little different, something that you may or may not be accustomed to. See, the church that I grew up in, uh, things were <laughs> quite different compared to some of the things that you may see today. For me, for us back then, in the church that I used to go to, when we say somebody got happy in church, they literally would get up and start dancing. Not the kind of dances that you do. I'm not talking about the dab. I'm not talking about that other funny dance I see you doing. What is it called? The Orange Justice? What's the other little funny dance that you do? What is it called? The, the Take a L or something silly like that? No, 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 no. The dancing that we saw the adults do when we were children, I really don't think you can put a name to it. Let's just say that it was a holy dance. It was, it was how they expressed or how they celebrated how good God has been to them. But what makes this more interesting is that we would hear them say things like, the Holy Spirit showed up or the Holy Spirit took over. So when we consider them getting happy, obviously about something that God had done for them or happy about the fact that God is just a good God and they wanted to express that and celebrate that. And then when you add that to this whole idea of the Holy Spirit showing up or the Holy Spirit taking over, listen, it's a lot to think about. But the scripture that I'm going to share with you I think it'll help us understand this a little bit more. Let's go. Here we are in the book of Acts, chapter two, a group of people sitting in a room. They hear a sound. I like to imagine that it was a loud sound. Scripture lets us know that the sound was like a mighty rushing wind. And before you know it, here's what the Bible says. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. So let's think about the story that I told, which was a true story. Clearly, it is possible based on the Holy Scripture, that the Holy Spirit, which is a spirit 
that comes from God, which is a spirit that comes from Jesus. The Holy Spirit actually isn't an it. The Holy Spirit is a person. You can't see him, but you can feel him. I know it is mind boggling, but it's true. And we just have to believe that it's true. Clearly, the Holy Spirit can show up and take over and show out. And whoever is present at the time clearly is going to feel the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's talk about the Holy Spirit for a second. The Holy Spirit, which has been sent from God, comforts us. The Holy Spirit leads us. The Holy Spirit does something called convicts us, meaning he's like our moral compass. When when something doesn't feel right, when something doesn't seem to be right, when we may be making mistakes, the Holy Spirit is there to put us back on track and lead us in the right direction. The Holy Spirit, I believe, especially when we consider my upbringing and some of the things that I learned and witnessed with my own eyes and even experienced myself, sometimes the Holy Spirit can fill you up so much so and remind you of how good God is to his people, to the world, and how good God is to you. And he can connect with you and and fill you so much so that you just feel like you can't resist uh, praising God and celebrating how good God is. Boys and girls, the Holy Spirit is real. The Holy Spirit is awesome. The Holy Spirit is powerful. And the Bible teaches us these things. Remember, the scripture said that everyone in the room was filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit took over. The Holy Spirit took control. So much so that they began to speak in different languages. What were they saying? I'm glad you asked. They began to speak about, to talk about, and to celebrate the goodness of of God. Here's what I firmly believe. And I know I say this a lot, but I just really want you to get it. I know that you're kids. But the moment that you decide, I don't care how old you may be, I really believe this. The moment you decide to follow Jesus, to commit your life to him, to recognize that He is your Lord. That means that he is in control of your life and you're actually okay with it. That you're going to obey him. That you're going to do what he wants you to do and what he teaches us in the Holy Scriptures, in the Bible. And that you're going to follow Jesus. Like, you're going to do what you can to do the things that Jesus did and to behave in the way that Jesus behaved. Like, it's a great decision to make. I really believe when you get to that point, boys and girls, that just like the people in Acts chapter 2, you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, there may be things that you have to learn in in different ways that you have to grow, and and there are going to be things that you'll come to understand the longer that you walk with Jesus. But listen, if you've already given your life to Jesus Christ, guess what? Don't be surprised. Once again, I don't care how old you are. You have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will fill you up. And trust me, I know this from experience. He will help you get through your day-to-day life in such a way that God is honored, that God is pleased. God is looking down upon you and smiling and then God is saying well done keep up the good work you can make it just trust me just trust the Holy Spirit oh man it's fascinating and I'll be completely honest with you 
It really doesn't make a lot of sense. Let me just say that flat out. It doesn't make a ton of sense. I don't even fully understand it. But we have to have the faith and we have to believe that the Holy Spirit is real. And if you're giving your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit is in you. And if you haven't given your life to Christ, well, get ready. Because when you decide to do so, you're going to get a great gift. And that gift is the Holy Spirit. All right, guys, my friends, I love you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Hope to see you soon. Peace out. Clap out.